What's up, fam? Shout out to the first person in the box. Donovan, shout out, salute to you too as well. Cowboys fan, DJ Mail, Boomer, Sooner, Lance. Shout out to you, man. And uh, Ty Jefferson, Ty Tice, and DJ Cobbs again. Miles Holloway. Shout out to everybody, man. I hope you guys can see, hear me. Uh, let's get things going. Um, it's one of those things, right? Uh, let me just turn my volumes down. Uh, all right, let's turn this thing down. Let's get this thing going, guys. Hey, I, after listening to the interview of uh, Chris Richards, I'm, I'm seeing a, a guy that speaks with conviction. I, I'm seeing a guy that speaks with truth. I, I see a poised guy after listening to all of the all 20 uh, all of nothing. I'm seeing a guy now that that's ready to elevate this whole entire team. Not saying that the coach, his staff, and everybody before him. But let's just listen it in because everybody can go to right now, DallasCowboys.com, listen to the exact same thing that I'm, I'm about to play. But uh, I'm just going to give you guys a live kickback of what I thought, what I'm thinking about. Oh, demeanor sense. It is. There's a definite love that I see from him and uh, hopefully he sees Rod it from me. Nelly. You know, from the sounds of it, it, it sounds like it's really cool he does, but um, man, I, I, I love this guy. It, it, it was from day one, um, just recognizing what he offered me and really it was his, a book on his life. He offered me from day one, never even had to ask for it. Uh, that shows me a guy who cares about others elevating around him and him trying to make everyone around him better. So I'm truly grateful to be here, truly grateful for him. As you say, you kind of cut from the same cloth when you're, when you're with the nuances in a defensive scheme. Does that, does that help? I mean, you guys will view the same situation a little bit differently and it's harder for other teams to know exactly how you're going to go into the season with your scheme sort of thing. When, when you're putting it together, I guess, can you talk a little bit about the process? Well, we're going to do what we know how to do best, and that's really what it's going to come down to. We'll figure that out through the course of the OTAs, through the course of camp, and uh, of course, I can't give you too much information there because, again, it's going to go out. Everybody's going to know, right? <laughs> so nobody can know. Again, we're working covertly here, all right? So again, I wish I could tell you, but I might have to come find you later, okay? So I'm, I'm just going to save that information right there. Hey. Speaking the truth, man, hey, I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm not going to give you the secrets in the inside of the insights of what I have in my mind, what we're going to try to do out here for the defense. One thing I can take from the way he speak, he speak with conviction. He speak whereas I believe now the defense can be able to listen and understand where this guy is coming from, uh, what type of uh, mindset he's going to have out there in the field. And he's going to break down of why he liked the type of cornerbacks that he liked, you know, and why he liked the type of safeties that he liked. And I think that the mixture of Will McClay and this guy right here, my God, I'm really thinking that this team finna change. 2018 Dallas Cowboys defense. Um, you guys saw the all or nothing, the Green Bay Packer game, right? We had that game in the bag. Second half, we our defense folded up like a week 10. And even um, with the... Uh, uh, one can argue and say the same thing with the L.A. Rams. We played them. You know, our defense, although it's on paper eighth ranked overall, we still had no, pretty much no interceptions. We wasn't really stingy with the ball. Uh, we wasn't really uh, doing anything for our defense. It looks good on paper. That's why I don't like stats. You know, I want us to get out there and take the ball away from the opposition. I don't like stats. Stats can lead you so much astray, and you fall in love with the stats. It will cause it will cause harm to your team. But if we can really take the ball away, that's different than taking the ball away and being the aggressive out there on the field. Those are two different things versus eight ranked overall defense. And everybody knows with our mind, heart, and soul, and what we see with our eyes. Guys, see, I got four eyes on today. And our defense, although they was ranked eight overall in defense, we really wasn't scaring nobody. But I believe deep down in my heart, this guy right here, Chris, he's about to step this thing up. Let's, let's listen to some more of what he had to say. But, but yeah, that's uh, it's ultimately what, what are we all responsible for. And that's to make sure we're all on the same page, we're all working as a cohesive unit, and we're all putting our best product out there on the field. 
It's hard not to notice that a lot of these DBs out here, you know, bigger, taller guys, kind of like the guys you had in Seattle. What, how's that, you know, when you take a new job, obviously you want to take what worked from your last job. I mean, what's the process of that and how are you translating that to this job? Well, it's just a part of the system and that's pretty the system. much what it is. It's, uh, there are certain individuals or certain guys of a nature who, who fit a certain profile who has historically worked better with this style of scheme and this defense. So um, obviously, again, the more guys that we can get of that nature, of that stature, of that build, the better that we think we can be, the more comfortable that we ultimately feel putting product out there. Why do your corners work better in this system? Length, strength, create issues at the line of scrimmage. I so said we want to cause as many problems as we can for an offense before the ball is even snapped. So if we're up there at the line of scrimmage and we're making you think about where you need to go and how you're going to get around me, it's a whole lot better than you just thinking about where you need to go. So it's where do I need to go, how am I going to get around him? If we're all Hey, you're talking about length, strength, and uh, putting the mindset of the opposition out there. Um, the thing is with that, that being said, I know it's choppy, so I'm just going to move my camera off so that you guys won't just see me chopping around. But the thing is, and I, and I know you guys can hear me, it's just what it is. All right, so the thing is with this all together, when he's talking about length, strength, uh, having the opposition to think twice about passing that ball on the outside, that speaks volumes, guys. That speaks so much volumes for the simple strength that now you got your cornerbacks and your DBs before the ball is snapped. The quarterback saying that I cannot pass this fade route because of this, this, this cornerback is pretty much pr playing press. And when you play in press, it creates so many different views it, for the quarterback to say, okay, I know I can probably win the one-on-ones with this particular battle, but it still will be now a 50-50 chance because if the jam is there and the strength of the, of the front four is there, it gets the quarterback to think for that extra two or three seconds. We saw all last year, we saw all of this last year of our guys playing so far off. And I think that with Chris, he's going to have these guys playing uptight on the line. You win your one-on-one -on -one battles, and you guys are going to hear what he have to say too as well by Byron Jones, by, by the fact that the mere, the mere size of Byron Jones, his ability to uh, play that press man coverage, you know, uh, that, that speaks volume, guys. I, I know that, uh, that the internet is choppy, so I'm just going to clear my mic, but uh, clear my uh, picture from here, but... This is all what I need to know from Chris, and it's a lot, man. Uh, if you guys haven't, watch the interview and its whole entirety on the Dallas Cowboys website. But I'm going to play a little bit more. We're off. Okay, where do I need to go? Is that what you Did you evaluate Byron Jones that way? He was coming out when you were in Seattle? Yes. You saw him? Yes. Again, prototypical, fantastic athlete, great height, size, length, speed. Again, everything is there. He has a great attitude. He's been working really hard from day one. Like I said, I'm thrilled to be around him. All that being said, what? you inherited Jordan Lewis. What are your thoughts on him as a, as a corner after his first year? Well, every now and again, there's an exception to the rule, <laughs> right? There's an exception to the rule. So you're grateful to have and take those exceptions. He is an exception. Uh, All right, so what he was talking about, guys, he was talking about the Jordan Lewis factor. Jordan Lewis, him being himself, He's about 5'11", 5'9", give or take. I don't know, 5'9", 5'11", 5, 5'5", five, five, five something, you know. Uh, not six foot, but he have extremely long arms. He, he is aggressive. He have a different type of temperament out there on the field. The tenacity aspect of him, uh, the student of the game, uh, and, and just that also as well. He said he inherited him. He's really going to have Joy Lewis flying out to the ball, playing everything that he want him to do out there, and hopefully – and I'm just saying, hopefully, maybe uh, that type of spunk or that type of spark out there will uh, ignite Jordan Lewis to play even better this year because everybody counted him out. So that speaks volumes, too, as well. I'm falling in love with this particular defensive strategy, the aspect of not laying down and folding up like a weak tent. You got now a defensive-minded coach that's going to say, okay, we're going to play everybody up front, up tight. We're going to pull the best out of the best. And we're not going to just put somebody out there just for some, uh, you know, 
he, you guys know how it's been just because he's been on a team and this sort of thing. But let me, I'm going to go ahead and let him play it out. Uh, there isn't very many guys who battle in the fashion that he does, and that's what makes him special. He's tenacious. He's got good enough length, and he's quick. He anticipates. He smarts. He's relentless. Those are the exceptions. What, the interception totals haven't been real high for the secondary the past few years. Is it, anything in particular you think he can do or to change that? So to speak. Well, we have to take advantage of our opportunity. And so we've had our chances to bring the ball home. We just need to make sure we capitalize on them now. So when we put our hands on it, we have to make sure we bring them in, bring them to the sideline, or put them in the end zone. What did, what did the Legion of Boom really represent to you, and, and how many of those, what characteristics can translate over to the Cowboys now? It was a standard of excellence and a standard of love, a standard of brotherhood. That's all it meant. It was that each one teach one. Everyone cares for one another, and everyone can count on one another. So more than being accountable, it was more about being dependable. Yes, indeed. So, hey, I'm going to stop this stream, and I'm going to pick it up on Google Hangout, whereas uh, you guys can really see my interaction. But I really thank you guys for tuning in. Just remember, this guy right here, Chris Richard, he, man, he guy's a genius. Man. Brain genius. Uh, just just catch me on the rebound. I'm going to catch you guys in the soon. Uh, stay tuned, all right? Peace.